so starting today's session, what I'm going to look to do is feed some eight mils on my short line for a little bit later on in the session. And I'm going to start by slapping a pellet at 16 meters to try and catch those crafty ones that are in the area, but don't particularly want to respond to any feed. So we'll grab our wig, our wig, our rig. I'm going to slip a Robin Red pellet on. Happy days, we're going to blast this out to 16 meters. I just got a double ship because of the bank. And really important to make sure your sections are really well clamped up. There's some great big angler fish here, and the last thing we want to do is uh, have half of our pole flying across the lake. So they're all nice and tight. And then we've got about two foot of line above pole floating tip. So I can just helicopter that rig over and make plenty of noise. So float choice wise, we've got a 0.1 of a gram carp slapper with that nice visible three mil tip so we can hold that big heavy pellet up. And there isn't too much of a chop on today, but if there was, we can still see it in, in rough conditions. And we're not gonna feed anything, we're just making a bit of noise and those inquisitive carp will hopefully come and see what's happening. So I'm trying to keep a, a tightish line after I've slapped it, just so I can connect with the fish nice and quick. And as it straightens up, then I'll just start slapping it over again. It's just like aggravating one into taking that pellet. So I've got about two foot of line above and then two foot below. And whilst we're doing this, I can just prep my short line for a little bit later on. Just eight or 10, eight mils. So when they're hopefully having a feed a little bit later on, just before we go down the edge, we can catch a few big ones there. They just come onto that line a little bit quicker than what you, what they would down the edge, generally speaking. There we go, so I've been slapping for a, say five or so minutes, been nice and patient, just keep slapping it over, making some noise, and then we've got a nice angry carp on the other end. So I'm just having to stand up just so I'm comfortable getting my pole up the steep bank behind us. And then we're just gonna ship down on three joints. He's behaving himself as well for a, a Medellin's fish, normally they're the other side of the lake. Unique way you're using my knee just to separate the sections. I think being so short, it uh, just makes it a little bit more comfortable for me when I've got a steep bank behind me. A little bit angry now. And when we're getting back to a top kit, I'll feed a few more eight mils on my short line, just prepping that line for when hopefully they're gonna have a little bit of a munch later on. So 10 or so eight mils on my short line. And then there's no rush with these because they're great big fish. Just push that out of the shot. So that nice 16 to 18 green slick doing its job. Oh, and we've got a right pecker for uh, for Medellins. There we go, got him in eventually. That nice long landing net pole, making it easier to grab him at length. And he's doing his best to soak me in the process. It's quite a lively one, so we'll slip him straight into the net. Nice long mirror about eight pound, a little bit bigger than I first thought. And then we'll just slip another Robin Red pellet on the hook or on the band even. So 
rig wise we've already spoken about on a on a separate video in more detail but we'll just have a quick run through so we've got a 20 main line an 018 hook length with an mxc four on there so a nice strong hook in a size 14 with a pellet band on just make sure that joint's nice and tight and then i've got two number nine shot directly underneath the float and that's just going to aid that natural fall of that heavy pellet. Just give it that little bit longer falling through the water. And I'm just making sure my joints are nice and tight. I'm going to grab 10 or so pellets to chuck on my short line. And then it's a case just ringing the dinner bell again and slapping that pellet over. So watching it fall through the water and trying to keep a tightish line to it as well so I can connect with the a fish when I have a bite hopefully. So generally I like to do like three, three rotations and then just wait for it to straighten up. And what's quite important on a bright sunny day if you can, you can have the shadow of your pole falling on the water. What you don't want it to do is cast a shadow directly over your float so if the shadow was falling to the right, I'd slap to the left to just make sure the pole shadow is away from the, the float. I think that's quite important when you're fishing shallow for these great big moody carp. And just in case of being patient and keep that pellet going round. And if you caught one every five minutes and they're eight to 10 pounds, you can have a colossal weight. So we're not looking to catch or one in my peg then, uh, millions of fish, one after another, the great big fish that are just cruising about and not overly looking for any feed. So there's another big angry Medellin's carp on the other end. So as I'm shipping back I'm just going to tighten them joints up if need be. So because you could be slapping away for five ten minutes and just loosening them up. And then when we come to that roller, just because we've got a high bank, stand up to ship it back, else I'll be breaking down every couple of sec sections, which you don't want. Yeah, those joints are still rock solid and tight. And then just grabbing my knee to support the section. And then down we go. Then 10 or so pellets ready for that short line later on. A few cranks on the puller. Oh, he might pop up early. The rest of them have ran us round, so. Come on, Mr. Carp. So absolutely no point pulling the reds off and they come off. So I'd rather him embarrass me and take me forever to get him in round the net and he actually go in the net than uh, looking like a hero pulling his head off and uh, it falls off. Because it's hard enough trying to get one on the hook to start with. There we go. Another nice plump mirror car. Just bend down and get it on the spreader block. Now he's angry in the net. Slide him into the net. So we've been fishing for a little while now, we've caught some early fish slapping um, but it's clear they've pushed out a peg and bites have faded away. So I've put my glasses on and it's a case of picking off any cruising fish, I'm trying to look as we're, as we're talking, um, on that outer pole range, on that little mugging waggler. So a decent pair of Polaroid sunglasses um, and where allowed if you can stand up on your box just so you can get um, above the, the white water and you can see the fish a little bit better. 
Um, so bait wise, I've got a robin red pellet on and I can swap that to a bunch of dead maggots to get a nice slow fall, just depending on how they want it. And then I've got a two gram um, mugging waggler on there. So I can chuck that past my pole range at any cruising fish or underarm it, as I say, if there's any close range ones. So we'll try and catch one on the little mugging waggler now. So we've managed to snare one on the mugging waggler, just being patient and they will eventually show themselves. So say there's not millions cruising about but once that slapping line's died and they're not yet ready, oh he's angry, pulling some line, not yet ready to come in and have a feed, that mugging waggler can be a brilliant way for just picking them off. I've had a few casts at a few of them and they've, they've turned the nose here so I've swapped to a little trim down um, yellow whale, so the little 5 mil one, uh, just so it's a real, real slow falling hook bait. And we've managed to, to snare one of those crafty Medellin's carp. So again, I'm not rushing it. I've took, took long enough to try and catch the fish. Last thing we want to do is lose him. So, and what we touched on earlier, that light main line just helps you get those mugging wagglers that little bit further. Whereas like traditionally you'd fish, I don't know, like a 020 or 022 on a, a pellet waggler. We've managed to scale it down to a 018 real line and then it just helps those little delicate wagglers get that little bit further. And I say with that 12 foot rod as well, just we can flick it. Flick it that little bit further as well. Certainly angry. I'm just trying to keep my eye out whilst I'm playing this one, see if, where the next one's going to come from. There can be like buses, you can be waiting forever for one, and then you up one, and there's uh, every fish in the lake seems to pop their head out. So it's just trying to keep a, an eye on what's happening. I'm talking, I ain't got my landing net ready. There we go, we felt sorry for me. An old warrior. I'll grab him on the spreader block. Nice fish that is. But you haven't got a cat hour's chance of catching on feed at this time of day. And we'll just unhook him. That bright orange. Bright yellow even, wowzer and we'll slide him into the net, lovely fish. So we've just struck into one on the short line and I've just fed eight or 10 pellets, ready for the next one. I'm just gonna see if he's gonna charge off on one. What I've done with this line, I'm fishing just onto my third section, so if it runs it gives me half a, half a chance to put some more sections up the back and then I've broke my pole down as well because they're, they're big, great big angry things in here. So it's really important to have sections to hand to, to put on if they go on a, on a big run. And gear wise for this line, um, we're fishing say, for great big fish so there's no point messing about. Got a 0.4 carp deck float, so a nice, strong, durable carp float for fishing on the deck. And it's got a slightly longer stem, they're not similar patterns on the market, and that just helps making sure he's under control of sorts. That just helps aid stability when you're fishing in deep water or choppy conditions, as I say, it's like a mill pond today but you can, uh, you can have great big waves on, on these big open expanses of water and you want your, your rig to be fishing properly on the bottom. It's no point towing all over the place. So that, that longer glass stem just aids presentation. Yeah, it's a nice fish that is. 
and he's uh, behaved himself for a change. So yeah, we've got a point floor float just shotted with six number eights on the hook length nut. 020 main line, always charging up a bit now, just giving a bit of elastic. 020 main line, uh, an 018 hook length with an MXC 4 in a size 14 with a pellet band on, so a real strong pattern that isn't going to let us down. And then the green slick in a long kit, that's uh, what's that, 16 to 18. So it sounds quite harsh, but it's really forgiving. If they want to go off on a run, we'll grab Mr. Landing Net. Just taking our time with them. Oh yeah, it's best fish of the day, I think. And with that short line, I say it's worth prepping it all day. And they seem to come on it a little bit earlier than what they will when you were going down the edge. Or some days you, they weren't coming down the edge and you only catch them on your short line. So it's a lovely way of fishing and you can amass a big weight of carp when those final stages of the match, those final couple of hours when they do actually come for a little chomp. So earlier in the session, we've got absolutely no chance of catching them on feed. We caught some slapping and some on a mugging waggler. And now it's coming to carp o'clock and we're looking at catching some big lads on the short line. Great big one. Let's see if I can get him in the net. It's a bit of a truffle shuffle. That's tail hanging out. I'm definitely going to need to grab him on the spreader block. Lovely fish. Great big old warrior. <sighs> Easily into double figures. Look at the width of him. His mouth's as big as my fist. So we'll hook that one up. And we'll safely slip him into the net. Gonna have to go out tail first because his head's in. So not the biggest fish that we've caught today, but a nice little chunk. Let's hold him up. Caught down the edge on last knock-ins. Let's slip him back and have a bit of a, a summary on how today's session's gone. So we've just caught that nice one down the edge. Um, it hasn't really been a day for edge fishing, but we'll just have a quick run through of what we've done down there. So I've come down 16 metres into the corner, big potted some dead maggots and some corn. Um, like a full 250 pot and fish say 8 or 10 maggots over the top of it with that nice positive um, XL power edge float that I could get through that scum and nail it down and we've clunked into one after about 5 minutes but it's been clear today that all the fish have wanted to be shallow um, they haven't really wanted to respond to any feed so we've caught some early slap in and then they've wised up to that a little bit so we've put my glasses on got that waggler out and managed to pick off some great big um, wary fish on a mugging waggler. Um, a couple have come into pole range and we've been able to nick them, but it's mainly been a day of going on that mugging waggler. Um, and we did have a couple of nice fish on that short line chucking in some eight more. So say they didn't really want to come down that edge, but that later period when they were thinking about having a little bit of a feed, we have managed to catch them on that short line. Hope you've enjoyed today's session. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel.